Hello friend, thank you so much for joining me over on YouTube. I just wanted to give you a quick heads up that the training that you're about to see was originally recorded via Facebook Live over on our Facebook page. If you like what you see and would like to learn more, make sure you join us over on Facebook for weekly tips and tricks to help you grow your direct sales business and work smarter, not harder. Today, we're going to talk about seven habits of successful direct sellers. The, as you know, as humans, we, we tend to have like our habits can either make or break us, right? If we have really bad habits around eating, if we have really bad habits around, um, around exercise, or we have really bad habits around, you know, anything else, right? They, they can either make or break us. They can either make or break our, our um, normal life. They can make or break our business, guys. And so what I want to talk about today is really the habits of successful direct sellers. So as we're going through this, I want you to kind of take some time to think about what are the habits? What are the things that I do every day? Because habits are things, they're, they're habits, right? So they're things that we almost do without thinking. They're things that we do um, eventually without having to try really hard. Like I have a habit of as soon as my feet hit the floor in the morning, I go downstairs and get coffee. That's just what I do, right? That's my habit for the morning. So think about what are those things that you're just doing without thinking about it? And let's kind of work through these habits. I'll identify them, give you some tips on how to improve them, and then um, give you some thoughts on you know how you can change them and, and go forward from there. So first of all, habit number one, um, di successful direct sellers prioritize, hang with me on this one, prioritize income producing or forward moving tasks. And so what do I mean by this? Um, we have a habit, if you've been successful in business, if you've been successful in your direct sales business, um, you tend to have a habit, and I know um, that the successful direct sellers that I've, I've hung out with, have a habit of identifying those or make it a habit to identify what are those tasks on my list? What are those tasks that I can do, those tactics, those things that I can I can do that are forward moving, they're income producing? Because let's face it, there are tasks that are not, um, like spending an hour making one Facebook party graphic or spending... Um, Spending time, this is a big discussion in our in our Savvy Seller Squad recently, um, trying to drag those team members who are just hobbyists, they're just going to place a small order, they're never going, they don't really want a business, but we're busy trying to drag them, you know, with us. We're too busy looking behind. That's not a forward-moving task. That is not an income-producing task. And so when we're thinking about our habits, guys, we have to come, we have to have a habit of um, daily, weekly identifying what are those forward moving income producing tasks that I can work on? I can tell you, I do this almost every day. So I have a, I make a plan for my week, but sometimes those plans shift. And so when I look at my plan for the day, each day when I wake up, I have to go, mm, is that the thing that's going to cause the most momentum? Is that the thing that's going to push us forward the most, right? So we have to be in this kind of constant state at this habit of reprioritizing to make sure that we are actually working on the things that are going to move our business forward. We have a habit of doing those, all right? And prioritizing them over the more mundane tasks, the more the tasks that are not forward moving, okay? So prioritizing income producing or forward moving tasks, all right? Because um, some of them aren't income producing now, <laughs> but they will be in the future. So you have to kind of think about that. Habit number two that I've noticed with successful direct sellers is they never stop learning. They create, they have a habit of learning constantly. And that learning can take place in the field by experience. That learning can take place um, going to conferences. That learning can take place reading books, masterminding, um, investing in, the, in, in coaching programs and things like that. But the truth is they are always learning. And with that learning, the, th the other thing I've noticed is there's a constant learning and constant testing, constant evaluating of results. So I had someone ask me the other day, because I read a lot of books, um, I know that about myself, but someone said, you're, you're always recommending lots of books. You know, how many do you read? And I was like, well, I, it's not a specific number that I aim for, but I, I'm always trying to learn. I'm always trying to make myself the best version and my business the best version of itself, right? So um, I do tend to read a lot, so I'm, I'm always in a state of learning or listening to podcasts or whatever, but it's not, it, there's no like magic number of books. There's no magic books. It's just taking the learning and then taking that step further, they have a habit of implementing. So along with the learning, it's one thing to hear. It's another thing to learn, 
Does that make sense? There is a difference between just the hearing and the actual learning and implementing. So we can we can go to conferences, we can we can listen to podcasts, we can read books all day long, but if we aren't actually learning from them and then actually implementing them in their business, then in our businesses, then it doesn't work. So habit number two is we never stop learning. And, and in that, we need to assume in that we never stop learning is we assume successful business owners and direct sellers assume that we don't know everything, okay? There's never an assumption that we know everything. That's otherwise we would have no need to continue learning. So I think that's a, an assumption we have to make is we we make this habit of learning because we always know there's a way to improve. I, I got an email from someone the other day for a course that I'm taking and she said, here's to making yourself 1% better every day. And I was like, oh, that is so good because that 1%, just that little bit, you know, in your business can move you, um, can move you forward. So it's, it's good. It's good. You guys. So never stop learning. All right. Number habit number three, <laughs> being consistent. Okay. Successful direct sellers are consistent. Okay. Consistent. They're consistently selling. They're consistently recruiting. They're con that consistent learning. Okay. It is consistent because why? Because part of that is because we want to learn. We want to, we want to see what works. We want to test. We want to try. We want to evaluate. But we also understand that being consistent in anything is going to give you results. So being consistent in, um, in exercise, being consistent in drinking water, being consistent in something as mundane as brushing your teeth. If you're not consistently brushing your teeth a couple times a day, you're going to have problems, right? You're going to consistently have problems at the dentist, <laughs> okay? So something as simple as that, think about it. So how would that, how would, if, if you were consistent in the things that you know you're supposed to do with your business, how would that shift your business? For most of you, it would shift it dramatically, dramatically. But the problem is we get so distracted and we think we need to go chase the bright, shiny objects, right? So be consistent in the things that are going to grow your business, being consistent in doing them every single week, every single month, okay? Habit number four is being goal focused. So I've noticed a lot, um, a lot of direct sellers tend to set goals, okay? But then we squirrel, we don't actually do the things that are going to move us closer to the goal. Okay. We don't, we don't actually focus on the goal. So successful direct sellers, what I've seen is we're constantly evaluating how close are we to the goal. It is a almost daily or weekly, at least weekly evaluation of where is my business and how close am I to the goal? The problem with setting goals, and we talked about this in our, in our Savvy Seller, seller Squad recently is... But the problem with setting goals is we set these annual goals and then we think, I got all year to take care of that. I got all year, right? Instead of breaking it down into quarters, breaking it down into months and weeks so that we can stay focused on it in our activities because we're goal focused, because we're, we're paying attention to the goals and how close we are and what we're doing. All of our weekly activities tend to line up after it. All of our daily activities tend to line up after, after that goal. So we're super hyper-focused on it, okay? And being goal-focused means we are constantly evaluating, right? And that's where the learning comes in. If we're evaluating something in our business and it's not working, then we know we need to go seek out some learning. We know we need to go seek out some some information, or we need to go seek out a coach or a program that's going to help us improve that part of our business, Okay. Habit number five, now this is a big one, guys, and this is something that takes time to kind of think through, is being proactive instead of reactive, okay, guys? <laughs> I hope you understand the difference. Being proactive is when we are actually thinking ahead a few steps, okay? I'm going to talk about this as far as host coaching, okay, because this is a, one where I see it um, fall down a lot, is when we're host coaching, right, we're like, okay, so... Some people believe host coaching is you send them a packet, you send them a couple of messages and done. You just walk away and let the party do whatever it's going to do. That is not host coaching, okay? Host coaching is being proactive, all right, in training and coaching our hostesses, giving them the information that they're going to need, but also being proactive and thinking through if this happens, what is my plan? If my hostess doesn't invite someone, what do I need to do? Instead of 
being reactive and panicking and then getting angry and flustered and all those things. So being proactive, thinking about your team. Okay. So I'm going to do this team training. I want to think about what is it, what's the result that I want? And that's, that's being proactive or I want my team to start recruiting. So proactively, I need to help them get some bookings. I need to help them instead of just throwing out a recruiting incentive and expecting it to work, right? Instead of, instead of just doing that, we've got to think through, okay, how can I, how can I be proactive about this and teach my team some systems, some strategies, some tactics so that they can actually get bookings so they can recruit? That's being proactive. Being reactive is the post I see all the time from direct sellers. And you guys, I'm sorry if I'm a step on your toes right now, but this is plum ridiculous. I'm so close to my goal. Somebody help me on the last day of the month. That is reactive. That is not proactive. Scrambling to meet being paid to be paid at your title or scrambling to keep your title on the last two days of the month or the last three days of the month is being reactive, not proactive. Okay. I'm just going to be straight up with you. Your top performers in the field, do you see them doing that? No, because they're being proactive. They're paying attention to their goals. They're being consistent. They have a habit of evaluating and looking at their business. So they're not reactive, guys. They're just not. We're only reactive to the emergencies that come up, like Facebook's on fire. Somebody grab a bucket, right? Or your, you know, other stuff, right? <laughs> and icky. Yes, Lori. <laughs> yes. It is it is not being proactive about your business, okay? So please stop doing that, guys. Start evaluating your stuff. Start staying focused on your goals way in advance so you don't have to scramble the last 48 hours of the month. Can I, can I just get an amen on that one? And I know I'm probably stepped on some toes, and I'm not sorry about that, okay? Habit number six, and this kind of goes along with learning and being evaluating and growing, right, is practice failing often, <laughs> okay? We have a habit as, as, as successful business owners, and, and I've owned several um, brick and, I've owned brick and mortar businesses. I've owned other online businesses. I've been successful in direct sales. And one of the things I actually love about the business is failing. And, and I don't mean failing in the sense of the business falling apart. That is not what I mean. But when we're constantly learning and evaluating and being consistent, we practice failing often. And what that means is, when we find something that doesn't work, we're like, whoa, okay, I know that doesn't work. Check that one. I can cross that one off my list. I tried that. That didn't work. Let me go try something else. Because we're always testing, tweaking, and trying to be better, to be that 1% better that I was talking about, to be just a little bit better next month or next quarter or next year than I was before. So, but to do that, we have to fail, guys. And, and that's, a, that's a perspective of failing forward, not failing back, because it's, it's about the lesson. It's not about the pass or fail. It's about the lesson. What did we learn? We tried this thing. What did we learn? I remember vividly one time I was, um, people always assumed when I was in the field that everything I did worked. And that's like the furthest thing from the truth. <laughs> there was one time I thought I was so smart and I developed this whole um, incentive program for my leaders. I really wanted to get my, my not so strong leaders to do the things that my strong leaders were doing. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to incentivize them. I'm going to do some training alongside, but I'm going to incentivize them. And so I came up with this fun, like, almost like a bingo tracker with some stickers. And it was amazing, right? In our director group, they were posting pictures of it. Guys, it was an epic failure. <laughs> it was epic failure. Did my strong leaders do it? Yep, they did. They were super jazzed up about the stickers. They were super jazzed up. They had it like on their wall next to their desk. But guess what? My leaders that I was trying to inspire, <clears throat> like, didn't do anything different. So I learned like my, my strong leaders, they were going to, they were going to level it up a little bit because they wanted to make sure that they were going to get the stickers and get the, the incentive. But my other leaders, not so much, not so much. And so it was, but it was a lesson. I didn't, there were some things that I needed to change about that incentive. I realized, oh, okay, that doesn't work. Let me try something else. So it makes sense. So we want to practice failing often, but take it from a perspective of look what I learned. I know that doesn't necessarily work or how can I tweak it to make it work better next time? Okay. So practice failing often. And the number seven is surround yourself with positive influences. 
So guys, this one I know can be really hard, especially if you've got business besties or something like that that are um, negative. Let's just be real. Some people are more wired to be positive versus negative. It's our, it's our default, right? And so positivity is not part of our strengths. And I tend to be, I actually tend to be negative more than I am positive, but business and time and, and learning and growing has taught me to be a little different. But my natural tendency is to assume something's not going to work. I do this, my team laughs at me. I do this every time we launch product. I'm like, I'm shocked. I'm always shocked when we launch something and I'm like, I didn't even know this was going to happen. And my husband's like, really? Really? Like you have historical data that says this is probably what's going to happen, but you're shocked every time. I'm like, well, I just assumed that something was going to fall apart. We were going to have to pivot, you know, something like that. But it, that's just my natural tendency. But so we want to make sure that we surround ourselves with positive influences and positive people. So this means that if you've got people in your world that are dragging you down, you've got naysayers, you've got negative Nellies, you've got um, even team members, guys. Um, I've actually had to stop. I had to stop coaching a couple of my team members because they were always negative. And I found myself um, after, and my husband was actually the one that pointed this out, after being on coaching calls with them and, and, and kind of investing my time with them, I would walk away and I would be so just beat down and negative. And my husband's like, every time you interact with this person, this is what happens. He's like, you, you got to squash this. And I'm like, you're right. I do. And so what I had to do is kind of distance myself and pull back a little bit because, and, and eventually we did have a, a great conversation about it. And I explained to her why, um, both of them actually I explained to them why I had pulled back, um, because they could, they could feel that I had pulled back. So I explained why, and it was a learning moment for them as well. But this is something where we have to we have to identify what we're allowing to come into our heads. Okay, are we are we going to Facebook groups that are always negative and always complaining, guys? I've been part of those, and I was like, leave group. Okay, get out. Unless it's a it's an it, there's nothing wrong with expressing something that hasn't worked, right? There's nothing wrong with asking for feedback, but when it is a constant state of I can't do this. There's there's no bookings. There's no sales. There's no recruit leads. Nobody wants, right? It's always blah, blah, blah. That's just negative and it's not true. It's just not true, right? So we want to make sure that we surround ourselves and we are in letting positive influences into our brain. So again, podcasts, books, um, showing up to your if your if your um, upline is doing great meetings and positive things, then show up for those and let that pour into you and distance yourself from the negative because you start to realize that those people in your world are not serving you. And guys, it is okay. Let me just say this too: it is okay to have friends, some temporary friends and temporary business besties. Okay. And here's the reason I say that: sometimes we outgrow them. Okay, I had business relationships where, you know, I was really connected with people and and I outgrew them. I, I outpaced them. They weren't where I wanted my business to be. And honestly, it was dragging me down. It was keeping me in a space where I couldn't couldn't move forward. And I remember um my business, one of my business besties who's still in the field um, and is a, an upper level leader and has an amazing, amazing team. We were contemporaries and we were moving at the same pace. And then when I decided to pivot, you know, she was like, uh, because I was talking about all these other things and she's an entrepreneur at heart. And so she was kind of helping me think through and, and digest some of that. But it was also slowing her down because I was going this way, but she wanted to go this way. And so she's like, I feel like I needed a different accountability buddy. And I'm like, I think you do too. So she ended up moving, you know, and, and building a relationship with someone else that was moving in the same direction as her. We're still very close and we still talk once a month, but now we're in different places. So it's okay to have, have our relationships move and change as our business moves and change. Okay. Changes. Okay. So let's, let's kind of review these really quick. Um, number one, prioritize income producing or forward moving tasks. This means we're not getting bogged down in the stuff that's not moving us forward in a discussion. Okay. We, and, and guys, your choice, you choose what you want to work on each day. So you choose to allow yourself to be distracted. The habits and, and the boundaries and the things that we put in place are the, the things that we need to put those things in place so that we can focus on the prior, prior, <laughs> the priority tasks, the income moving and the forward momentum moving. Um, habit number two is never stop learning. We're always testing. We're always trying. Being consistent. 
putting systems in place so we can be consistent, putting putting boundaries in place so we can be consistent in all the things that we need to do. Um, habit number four is always being goal focused instead of just focused on arbitrary stuff, right? Habit number five is being proactive, not reactive. I see this one way too much with direct sellers, guys. Thinking ahead, have a habit of thinking ahead a couple of steps. And it doesn't take that long to do that. Just think ahead a couple of steps, check your results. Am I on track? So we don't have that last 48 hour posting all over the internet. Help me, help me, help me um, get my sales in, right? Number six, practice failing often. You know, practice being a Thomas Edison. Find a thousand different ways not to do it so you know exactly how to do it, okay? And then surround yourself with positive influences and practice purging the negative ones because they don't, they don't have any, there, there's no space for them here. There's no space for them here, okay? All right, guys. Have a fabulous rest of your week. Bye, guys.